torture is generally outlawed in modern society. But what about way back when, long before international law? Well, no one did it better than the ancient Chinese when it came to humiliation and pain as part of torture and execution. They were extremely inventive and vicious in their ways. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we'll look at what disturbing punishment was normal during ancient China. If you're looking to kill an unwanted pang of hunger or unnecessary appetite, look up photographs of this torture from the 1800s. It'll do the job, trust me. Yet Ling Chi, the death by a thousand cuts, goes way, way back to ancient China. At the very least, it can be dated back to the 10th century. An extremely painful and sadistic form of torture was saved for the very worst of crimes. Ancient China deemed the worst crimes committed by a citizen as the Ten Abominations. The crimes that qualified as abominations were patricide, witchcraft, mutilation, and rebellion, among others. This prolonged torture was delivered with a knife that made not lethal cuts of flesh all over the body. Records show it consistently was as many as eight cuts, but could be more. The cuts would start at the face, then over the limbs, then all over the body. Chunks of flesh would be purposefully removed from a living, writhing body. Quite purposefully, the victim would be lacerated enough to agonize, but not enough for them to bleed out and die. That being said, records of Ling Chi often include the removal of limbs from the ankles, elbows, and wrists. The final cut of Ling Chi would be made either to the heart or the throat. There are also records of decapitation. This ritualistic show death holds attitudes towards torture found in other ancient cultures like Egypt with its consideration for the afterlife. Ling Chi represented a living dismemberment, so the soul had no substantial vessel for after death. Intentionally, Ling Chi was used to destroy the victim's future after this life. Punishment of body and soul. Hideously painful, this torture of prisoners was banned in China in 1905. A creepy and disturbing means of torturing an individual, bamboo torture was commonplace in ancient Chinese punishment. Imaginative, elaborate, yet incredibly off-handed, those committing the torture hardly did anything at all. Bamboo torture was left to the bamboo itself. Those responsible for ensuring it merely had to make preparations beforehand. The design of this choice in torture is down to the incredible properties of bamboo. It's capable of a rate of growth hardly seen in other plants or flora. When at its healthiest and in bloom, bamboo is capable of growing as fast as a foot in just 24 hours. Ancient Chinese gatekeepers of torture and punishment saw a cruel and twisted opportunity in this. A victim would be carefully suspended above several shoots of alive and growing bamboo. The bamboo beneath them would have all its highest tips carved into the sharpest of points. So over a matter of just days, the suspended victim would soon be stabbed and pierced by the bamboo, unable to escape. As time went on, the bamboo would grow further until it impaled organs and eventually killed the prisoner. The history of torture has probably never accomplished such a slow and agonizing experience with something so famous for its speed. The earliest recordings of ancient Chinese penal systems display an appetite for cruel punishment. The direct translation of the Wu Hu Xing is the five punishments. The choice of punishment was dependent on the crime committed by the victim. How much punishment was dished out and in what severity was dependent on the view of the crime committed. Early ancient China before the Qin Dynasty lists five brutal punishments. There were tattooing, amputation of a single foot or both, castration, amputation of the nose, or sentencing to death. 
It's hard to articulate exactly why, but punishments developed over time and different dynasties. Come the late 6th century, at the time of the Sui dynasty, the punishments do seem relatively softer. Though, oh, let's be honest, that really might not be saying much. Later recordings of the five punishments include beatings with sticks of heavier and lighter weights, exile, serving time, and death by suffocation or beheading. The grading and degrees of punishment stayed with their evolution of them. Should a prisoner be sentenced to exile, the more severe their crime, the further and longer they were sentenced to exile. There was also a degree of custom and cultural interpretation to the choice of punishment. In ancient China, a beheading was deemed a worse punishment than being strangulated to death. The decapitation was viewed as disrespecting a body passed down by generations of ancestors. Despite the agony of being strangled by a rope, beheading was the primary choice for disgracing a person in torture. These are just a few outlines of extensive do's and don'ts across different epochs and dynasties. Ancient societies and civilizations are often noted for their brutality. Many are also noted to be anything from masculine leaning to hypermasculine. The downside to this is an often absolutely disastrous treatment of their women. Ancient China gives an example of this so explicit it barely dares to utter. One doesn't need a degree in any social science to see this extremely gendered punishment being dished out in the form of the wooden horse. This device was named for its form and structure. It was used against women found conspiring to kill their husbands or guilty of adultery. Riding a wooden donkey was a half-torture and half-walk of shame in ancient China. Its origin has been attributed to both the Han Dynasty and the Song Dynasty. A curved wooden plank of some length would have a horse head and hooves attached to it. In the place of a saddle would be a sharpened wooden stick on the center of the horse's back. This perverse torture method would have the woman's prisoners lowered upon the stick until penetration through their genitals. The struggle of victims would be cemented by nailing their thighs to the horse so there could be no escape. The wooden horse would be paraded through the streets while gongs and drums were beaten. Adulterous women were viewed as broken shoes in ancient Chinese culture. This extreme shaming is a ritual for placing blame upon them. During their donkey ride, the victims would often be beaten throughout the travel and demanded to talk in public about their deeds. Using body weight to inflict damage on a prisoner is a long-held staple of torture. Interestingly, using the form of a horse mount as a method of torture is not specific to ancient China. It found uses in other epochs and civilizations. The French called it the Chevalet, for example, and instances of horse-mounted torture devices being used in the American Civil War can be found. The destruction of a person's face proved popular torture in ancient times. Ancient Egypt, for example, was rife with instances of removing the noses of prisoners to mark them for their crimes. Ancient China was not all that different and had a clear fondness for flaying. In this context, flaying meant removing the skin from the face of a person commonly with a sharp knife. The symbology of defacing those deemed criminal or heretical was strong in ancient China. The emperors are renowned for their appetites of flaying those they deemed dissenting. In 1396, Guoryu, emperor of the Ming dynasty, demanded that an astounding 5,000 women were flayed. That's right, 5,000 people had their faces cut from their skulls. As if this was not enough of a show of power, he had these face skins stuffed with straw and placed on walls. This early form of taxidermy was used to terrify those thinking of turning on the state. You can only guess it worked. 
Creativity and brutality was not hard to find in ancient China. Flaying was no different. There are chilling instances where the flaying was adapted to up the suffering. There is a legend that mercury flaying took place in early China. It's alleged the victim buried vertically with their head above ground would have incisions made in their scalp. In these incisions, mercury would be poured into their flesh. The intended result was the poison of the mercury would separate the skin from the flesh and their face would peel off. This in a time before television and in a time before the Saw franchise. If you want more of history's darkest corners and deepest secrets, make sure to subscribe to Bizarre History. Thanks for watching. See you next time.